Have you got a whole massive, well tiny, Horus Heresy army you need to paint? Well we're here to show you how to get your Warhammer, the Horus Heresy Legion's Imperialis armies painted quickly and effectively in any of the Horus Heresy Legion colours. The Legionis Astartes are divided up into 18 legions, 9 loyalist and 9 traitor. And in this video we'll be showing you how to batch paint your Astartes infantry and vehicles, ready for your grand battles on an epic scale. For our video we'll be painting a command squad and a few Mark VI marines, a Contemptor Dreadnought and a Sakaran tank in the colours of the Death Guard Legion and all the paints we've used are on the screen right now. These techniques will give you the tips and tricks on how to paint the different infantry and vehicles for your Legion. If you're new to painting or want to brush up on your skills, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about paints and techniques. We'll also be showing you the colours that you'll need for the 17 other Legions after the tutorial and we'll show the paints needed with each Legion using the same techniques, tips and tricks from this tutorial. We'll also be using the same brushes for these too, as they're the same models after all, just in many different colours. With these tiny models, you can undercoat and paint most of the infantry on the sprue. For some other units that are in multiple parts, it's best to assemble these first and stick them to a coffee stirrer with some double-sided sticky tape or sticky tack. We can also stick the Contemptor to their base already. For our Death Guard, we'll be using Wraithbone as our undercoat, as the primary armour colour is a dirty cream colour. It's also a great idea to have a pot of Wraithbone to hand, to tidy up any mistakes we make. Remember if you want to paint your models as the other legions, just keep watching after this section. So now we can start painting our tiny legion. We'll start with our secondary armour colour and for this we'll be using Death Guard Green. This colour is normally seen on the shoulder pads, banner, knee pads and tank markings. As these details are super small, we'll be using a small layer brush for these, and pretty much for most of our painting today. When painting many types of models in the same colour, it's best to work in units and write down what you're painting on each unit with this colour. This just helps to make sure you don't miss anything out, avoiding any surprises on your units not matching and spending more time finding mistakes than painting. Just a few thin coats will be plenty enough to build up the colour on your very small army. Next we'll paint our metallic details with lead belcher for any weapons, tank tracks and joints on your Contemptor Dreadnoughts. This colour will be used a lot on your models, so apply this in a couple of coats. You can always save time by applying the first coat to all your models in order. So by the time that our last unit or vehicle has its first coat, our first unit should be dry and ready for our second coat. By using an assembly line process of painting, we can make sure we cover all those details and can be ready for our next colour. Remember that you can always look at the box art or books if you aren't sure what to paint with this colour. Then we can add Rune Lord Brass for the brass colour metallic details. These are found on most types of units, especially on the infantry and on our command squad. This unit uses this colour a lot on the banners and on the Praetor model. On your vehicles there will only be a small amount of this colour used. This is why planning your colour scheme and placement is key when painting your armies, so you don't waste time painting one detail in the wrong colour just to cover it with this paint. Keeping to a couple of thin coats and working in an assembly line will get all these details done in no time. And remember to change your paint water after this colour, so we don't get any metallic flakes in our last few paints. With that paint water changed, we can apply Corvus Black to any of the smaller details found on your units. On the infantry, this can be anything from weapon casings, cloth and helmet crests. For vehicles, this is good for any weapon casings visible, and adding any additional markings if you wish. It's best at this point to check over your units and vehicles, to make sure you have all of those details neat and tidy before our final paint. Now we're going to apply more tearing grime all over the Wraithbone, Death Guard Green and Lead Belcher details, using a medium layer brush. This is to get that dirty cream armour worn by the Legion, and gives our other colours a grimy shade and ties all our colours together. We can also add a second shade into the recesses of the Wraithbone if it's not dark or dirty enough on our larger models, like vehicles. When painting any infantry, starting with a lighter coat of any shade will make sure you don't lose any of those tiny details. You can always add more afterwards. And as these models are small, you'll get a lot covered in one go. So work in squads when doing all your infantry. By the time you have applied the shade to all your squads, that first squad should be dry to apply a second coat if needed. Just like with all shades, we need to be careful of any pooling once applied. So take a clean brush and soak away any excess while still wet. And there we are, our Death Guard units are ready for a battle against the Loyalists of the Imperium. 
You can see we've popped the Command Squad and Contempt of Dreadnought on our bases. And you can check out our videos on how to paint those up for your units. Now we can take a look at what colours you need for the rest of the 17 legions, and any tips and tricks for painting up your units. For the mysterious Dark Angels, we'll be undercoating our models in grey seer. Then we'll be using Black Legion for the primary armour, Lead Belcher for the metallic details, Wraithbone and Mephiston Red for any cloth and additional details, such as a few knee pads, shoulder pads and gun casings. And to finish off, we'll apply a shade of Norn Oil all over our colours. Now striving for perfection is the Emperor's Children. For this legion, we'll undercoat them in Wraithbone and apply Luxian Purple for that primary armour colour. Next, we can apply Corvus Black as our secondary colour for those shoulder pads and tank markings. Also, remember you can use this colour for any cloth too. Then we'll add Iron Hand Steel and Retributor Armour for our metallic details. Then we'll shade those metals with Null Oil. A nice and clean colour scheme for the Emperor's finest traitors. Next up is the Ruthless Iron Warriors. And seeing they're in mostly metallic armour, we'll undercoat them in Lead Belcher. With most of the armour already done, we can move to applying Rune Lord Brass for the other metallic details. Then we can shade over with Agrax Earthshade. For the Hazard Stripes, we'll be blocking in areas with Avalon Sunset first, then tidying up and making Hazard Lines with Corvus Black. But if you don't feel like doing this detail, you can just use Corvus Black for the gun cases and all those additional details. For those Furious White Scars, we'll start with an undercoat of White Scar, as this namesake paint is suited for their armour colour. Then we can add Soul Black Grey over that undercoat to get some darker recesses, but don't apply this too heavily. Then we can add Iron Hand Steel and Skull Crusher Brass for our metallic details. To contrast that white armour, we'll be using Mephiston Red for our secondary armour colour, and any honorary markings, but these are optional. And to finish it off, a shade of Null Oil over the silver and red details. Jagatai Khan would be proud. Now the mighty Space Wolves. These marines are undercoated in Mechanicus Standard Grey. Then we'll add Corvus Black for our secondary armour and details, just like the doors on the tanks, shoulder pads and backpacks, and even the cloth on the infantry. Then we'll apply Lead Belcher and Rune Lord Brass for any metallic details. Then cover both of those colours with Null Oil. You can even add a small amount of this shade over the primary armour, just to add a little bit of shadow on those armour plates. For the stalwart Imperial Fists, we'll undercoat our models in Wraithbone, ready for the aptly named Imperial Fist, which is perfect for their primary colour. Then we'll use Corvus Black for our secondary armour details on the shoulder pads, cloth, any tank or contempt to dread panels. Next for our metallics, Retributor Armour for the trim and Iron Hand Steel for the mechanical parts and weapons. And to finish it off with a Null Oil shade over the silver, gold and black details. Time for Terror with the Night Lords. These models are undercoated in grey seer and will be covered in Leviathan blue for their primary armour colour. Then we can apply Iron Warriors for the darker silver details, Brass Scorpion for the trim, Corn Red for any extra details like cloth or helmet plumes. Then Null Oil all over the brass, silver and red details. That's seven down, just ten more Contemptors to go. Finally, some angelic retribution in the form of the Blood Angels. These marines are undercoated in Wraithbone. Then we'll be applying Blood Angels Red for the primary armour. Once dry, we'll use Corvus Black for any secondary armour like backpacks, knee pads, cloth and weapon casings. Next, we'll add our metallic details of Retributor Armour and Iron Hand Steel, then shade those metals with Null Oil. Now he's ready to protect the homeworld of Baal. When it comes to the headstrong Iron Hands, we'll start with Grey Seer as our undercoat. Then we'll apply Black Legion all over for our primary armour. Then we'll add Lead Belcher for our metallic details. For the secondary armour, we'll use Corex White. And you can use this for any cloth, gun casings or extra details. Then we'll use Null Oil to shade all over. Just thin it down a little with a bit of water for shading the white. If Rage Fuel Combat is your thing, then the World Eaters are your legion. Start with our undercoat of Grey Seer, and then we'll be adding a secondary colour of Talisar Blue on the shoulders and the knee pads, and any extra armour panels if you wish. Then we'll apply Corvus Black to our weapon casings and any cloth on our infantry. Then we'll use Lead Belcher and Brass Scorpion for our metallic details and use Norn Oil to shade over everything, just thinning it down a little for that white armour. Courage and honour next with the Ultramarines, and we'll be starting with an undercoat of Grey Seer. Ready for the Ultramarines blue we'll be applying all over. Then for our metallic details we'll be using Lead Belcher for our metals and Retributor Armour for the ornate trim. 
And then we can add Black Legion for our weapon casings and cloth and finish it all off with a light shade of Null Oil all over. Now we're done with the blue, let's paint something red. For the psychically gifted Thousand Suns, we'll be undercoating our models in Retributor armour. Then we'll apply Blood Angels Red to the primary armour, but avoiding the helmets and trim, so we can keep it in that lovely gold colour. But you can always tidy up in Retributor armour afterwards. Then we can add Black Legion for the weapon casings and Lead Belcher for the metallic details and finish off with a Norn Oil shade over everything. It's suddenly a bit dusty around here. The War Master's finest, the Sons of Horus are undercoated and grey sear. Then we'll apply Sons of Horus green over everything. You may find that you need a couple of coats of this colour. For those weapon casings and secondary colour details, we'll add Black Legion. Then Lead Belcher and Retributor armour for the metallic details. And finish off with an all over shade of Norn Oil especially over those metallic details, and just be lighter over that green armour. For the treacherous word bearers, we'll start with a grey sear undercoat, then apply flesh terrors red all over, then black legion for the secondary armour and extra details. Next we'll add lead belcher for the metallic details and shade over everything with Norn Oil. We're almost there, just a few more dreadnoughts to go. Fiery at heart but loyal to the end, the salamanders are undercoated in grey sear and then covered in Militarum Green for the primary colour. Then we'll use Black Legion for the secondary armour colour to pick out any shoulder pads and weapon casings. Just take your time applying it near the green armour. For our metallic details, we'll be using Lead Belcher and Balthazar Gold for the trim and extra details, and a Norn Oil shade to tie everything together. Striking from the shadows, the Raven Guard are undercoated in grey sear. Then we'll apply Black Legion all over. This will give us our primary armour colour, but also cover the weapon casings. Then we'll use Korax White for any secondary armour and details, like cloth, helmets on officers and contemptor knee pads. Now we can add Lead Belcher for all our metallic details and apply Norn Oil all over. Just thin it down a little bit with water for the white details. And for the Deceptive Alpha Legion, we'll be undercoating our models in Lead Belcher for a metallic base to our primary armour. Then we'll apply Achillean Green all over. Just be mindful about how heavy you apply this contrast as we want that metallic shine to come through. Next we'll add Black Legion for our weapon casings and extra details, and Lead Belcher for the metallic details like trim, tracks and weapons. And to finish off, we'll use Norn Oil to shade over the silver details. Now you've seen all 18 legions painted on our Contempt of Dreadnoughts, but what legion will you choose? Will you pick a Loyalist Legion, defending the Imperium of Man? Or will you join the War Master's side and crush it with your traitorous legion? For more tutorials, tips or tricks, check out our videos on the Warhammer YouTube channel. Or head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be happy to help you. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!